guys, this is Super Ty, and I'm joined with Comic Book Brando. That's me. And we're going to talk about all the cool new comics that are coming out tomorrow, which is the 16th of August. It's going to be an awesome time. The new comics day. Yeah. As usual, if you guys want to uh, chip in with questions, conversation points, what you're excited about, please do. And we'll address it in the realist of times. So. Such real time. So I'm going to start off while he's getting that ready. You guys know I've been really digging the Superman books, and this one gets really crazy because, as you can tell, uh, Yellow Lanterns are involved from the Green Lantern mythos. Uh, looks like Parallax, the main force behind the Yellow Lanterns, is loose on Earth somewhere, and it involves like a lot of children kidnapping, and it kind of really, what's the best way I can put it? It examines what Superman's really afraid of, and I'm not going to tell you what that is. But it is because that's the source of parallaxes. Yeah, exactly. So that's how that's how parallax gets you. So super awesome. Uh, this one's way more action packed than some of the more recent issues, uh, and it also is a little a little more humbling for Superman. That's the best way I can put it, without giving away stuff. All right, <clears throat> it's time for the metal. <clears throat> Dark Knight's metal. This is the big storyline happening this year for DC Comics, mm -hmm. and at least through Batman, but I'm pretty sure it's like the big epic one. And uh, we've gotten tastes of it with uh, The Forge. And the casting. And the casting. And now we're to the metal. This is the, this is the payoff. Uh, Batman's been researching things. Uh, Carter Hall has a journal out there that explains like a mystery and the, the strange nth metal yeah. is a thing. So this issue is going to like kick off the storyline. We're going to see what what's going to happen. Uh, what is this dark future or dark present? Yeah. Uh, that that is in store. There's a big surprise at the end. If you didn't let the internet spoil it for you, or if you're Ty, I spoiled it for you. It's all good. Um, <clears throat> I'm so anti-spoiler too. I'm so upset. I know it's fine. Don't uh, sweat it. Anyways, it's awesome. This is the big thing. Check this out. And look at that. Look at this little clever design by Capullo. Yeah. I dig it. Metal. Metal. Batman is the thumb. <laughs> Batman is the thumb. <laughs> um, man, we need to make a t-shirt that says that. Batman is the thumb. Batman is the thumb. Patrick says, what's up, guys? What's up, Patrick? What's up, dude? My next one is Super Sons number seven. This is the end of a short little story arc about... Damien and John helping out the Teen Titans with the forgotten supervillains. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, the last issue, it kind of left off on a humorous cliffhanger where Damien was aged 80 years. And so he's like this tiny little like old man Damien just running around. It's, <laughs> it's pretty fun. So this, this has actually been one of our better sellers for DC. This one routinely sells out. Super Sense has been very popular. And it's been really fun. That's I think that's why. Just because it's been a really fun, you get to see two kid heroes bickering back and forth with each other. You also get to see... <laughs> oh man, I, I'm not going to spoil it. You get to see some really fun stuff in this one. So definitely be picking this series up. Rusty says, good day fellas. It's a good day for a dark night. Oh! It absolutely is. Good one, Rusty. I like that. Yeah. Except, I don't know. I mean, this is, I read it, and it's like, well, it's Batman, uh, Batman Justice League story, but Batman knows a little bit more than the rest of them, so how does that usually end up? Hmm. Not great Not for well. one. I can name at least three story arcs where that okay. does not end well. Tower of Babel was the big one. Tower of Babel, there was also everything leading up to Infinite Crisis, where, you know, mm -hmm. everybody kind of finds out Batman has contingency policies for everybody. Yeah, uh, the old OMAC project. Yeah, OMAC. Brother I. Sometimes you know a little bit too much. <clears throat> Mage, number one. Uh, Matt Wagner is back on his classic character, one of the ones that made him who he is today. Uh, this is the third storyline. It was always uh, uh, in the in the in the cards for Kevin Matchstick to be uh, visited by three wizards, and the third has not appeared. It's been many years since the second. Uh, obviously, he's aged a bit, and there's some surprises in this one for fans that uh, didn't see it, won't see it coming. Uh, I really enjoyed this new uh, new chapter in the storyline, and uh, very glad to see that it's happening. So. Give this a read. I recommend probably reading the earlier stuff first. It's 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 
great. I love uh, uh, the hero discovered. We just got a new trade paperback with that in stock. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, give it a shot. Astonishing X-Men number two, as I've been saying for a long time, the X-Men books are doing really awesome things right now. This is a this is a team of, you know, the kind of kind of the bad boys of the X-Men, mm. is the best way I can put it. You know, you got Phantom X, you got Old Man Logan, you got Gambit. Nothing bad about Beast. Well, stay tuned, because oh. uh, there's some things in this one. The I'm not going to lie, I was kind of skeptical on this one, and I read the first issue, and I was blown away. So, I admit when I am wrong. This is actually a really great series. It's written by Charles Soule, who I consider to be a really amazing writer nowadays. So, uh, and the bad guy, I was very impressed with who it was. Uh, I don't know if I should tell who it is. Cause nah. It, nah? Keep it. Okay. So, the bad guy is really great, and this whole issue, it all takes place in the, you know, mindscape of the Marvel yeah, Universe. Yeah, I so, yeah, I knew this one. Yeah, so a lot of things that are happening in this book, it's not really happening, but it is. It, it gets trippy, and that's that's one reason I like it. I yeah. like that team lineup, too. Yeah. It's a good X-Men team. Solid book. Like, bordering on classic, but different. Yeah, exactly. Robert says, what's good? Well, allow us to tell you, Robert. Oh, yeah, hey, hey Robert. Uh, the first issue of Astonishing X-Men is really great. You should definitely be picking this series up. I'll see you tomorrow. He still hasn't, hasn't read the first one. Oh, yeah, so you should be reading it. It's great. Get on it. Yeah, we'll see him tomorrow. Of course. All new Guardians of the Galaxy number eight. Uh, so the Sh Shire Raptors, like, boarded the Milano and poisoned Rocket. Mm. Rocket's dying, and it's up to Peter Quill with half of a Negaban pair. To go fight a raptor to get the antidote, if that's even possible. Mm. Uh, Peter Quill is not necessarily one you could depend on in this kind of situation, but we'll see if he can pull it through. Uh, meanwhile, Gamora has to fix the ship. Mm. She's not good at that. Oh no. So, uh, Gary Dugan's Guardians is fun, like the movie characters. It's got, uh, you know, the characters interacting in the way that's familiar if you're a fan of the movie. And I really dig this series. It's cool. It's got that that same feel, but it's also like new stories. So yeah, give us a read. And plus, a little bit more on what's happening with Groot. Oh yeah, that's that's a great subplot happening in that book. Yeah. Ultimates squared number one hundred. So this is the they're kind of jumping to the legacy numbering. Is this the first of the legacy books? Yeah, this is the first of the legacy books. But ironically, it's also the last issue of this series so uh, it's kind of a, wah, wah. yeah kind of a paradoxical right there but I've been saying this ever since the series started this is the smartest team book that is being written right now it goes crazy cosmic like old school 60s and 70s Marvel books where it's just like oh yeah every giant space god is fighting but it's all conceptual so they can really do anything and hmm. who this book gets nanners and uh, as you can tell who are these guys oh man Oh man, the classic. Ult yeah, the Ultimate Universe guys are showing up, but how can that be? Who knows? Let's find out. Uh, also, we need a t-shirt that says, Getting Nanners. Getting Nanners. Just a picture of me holding comics. Get nanners. nanners. <laughs> uh, Batman, The War of Jokes and Riddles. Uh, this is the, the next installment of this story by Tom King. Uh, a curious chapter in which... Uh, bread is being broken hmm. uh, and and a meal is served to warring sides by none other than mr bruce wayne oh man uh, this is a really cool story and we're getting to see uh you know what happens when gotham is torn apart by their warring criminals how does the batman respond to that when he's not even you know they're not even after him they're after the ability they're after the right to kill him yeah that, I actually, I was really behind on this. Yeah. I read like issue 24 and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll read the next one. And I just got behind and I read all of them leading up to this. Yeah, and on. I'm man, it's good. This issue is pretty crazy. Yeah. I really, I mean, my favorite bit about these, the storyline is the tete-a-tete -tete between Joker and Riddler. Yeah. And it is in prime form in this issue. Not a lot of action, but uh, this is a good one. I like good pressure cooker book, you know, issues. I mean, can you imagine all, like, basically, 
Gotham's worst villains. Yeah. In one room. Yeah. See, that's cool. And I, have a little chit chat. Yeah, I really dig that. Over some, uh, over some din din. <laughs> Getting nanners. Getting nanners with Din Din. <laughs> Man, we're, we're, we're killing it today. Uh, Patrick really likes the cover. Spider-Man 2, Issue 2. So, the main question in this book is, who's the other Miles Morales? Because, you know, Miles Morales is from the Ultimate Universe, so was there an original 616 Miles Morales? How old would he be? You know, because he in the Ultimate Universe, he was the same age as Peter Parker. True. So, is there an adult Miles Morales running around? Who knows? And also, it's a really cool fight uh, se action sequence. Like the first half of the issue is Taskmaster, who I always thought was an underrated, <clears throat> you know. It's a really cool. Uh, yeah, they changed up his. Yeah, they changed up his design, design stuff, yeah. which sometimes he needs it, but actually looks a bit more fearsome. Yeah, I think he's a very underused yeah. and unappreciated villain in the Marvel universe. So I'm glad to see him, you know, kicking some spider tail. He's kind of the go-to mercenary. Yeah, and. He needs to be elevated to that point. But yeah, this has been really good. Bendis writing two separate Spider-Men. <laughs> like, there's this great line where they're cracking jokes to each other in front of Taskmaster. And Taskmaster was like, oh great, there's two of them now. Like, I was like, that's, that's annoying Spider-Man is great. Awesome. Rich Tommaso's Spy Seal starts with uh, uh, this new number one issue. This is the, the Courtney Steel Phoenix. Hmm. The storyline of this uh, particular issue kicks off. He's Britain's slickest secret agent, which cracks me up. It's really excellent. Um, basically, like we got like an adult sci or adult spy fi, or well, kind of more just straight up spy action uh, with anthropomorphic beings. So, mm -hmm. there's a seal. He's got a, a bird friend. There's like a dog MI6 agent and. Uh, attractive the femme fatale is a bunny of course because is uh, it lola bunny from space jam <laughs> it is not oh okay uh, some similarities i guess no. um yeah this is really cool beautiful art new series uh just something different so yeah yeah give this a look it's very clean art you can see oh yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm a huge fan of titles that tell you what the book is about you know <laughs> spy seal yeah spy seal head lopper stuff like that He's got a pretty snappy turtleneck. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is like this is for fans of uh, who would be interested in like an adult Tintin series. Oh, there you go. Uh, with a splash of Black Sad. So if, if you like either of those, this is definitely a book you should check out. Cool. The Mighty Thor number twenty-two. <whistles> so you, you finally get to meet the Queen of Cinders, which is. Bear in mind, I'm not really good at naming the realms of Thor mythos of Muspelheim? Muspelheim. Yes, Muspelheim. Muspelheim. The, Muspelheim. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We have to say it's sort of Nordic sounding. Uh, so she's, you know, the daughter of Surtur, the giant fire demon that Thor was always fighting back in the day. The main focus of this issue is the War Thor, which if you are not familiar with who that is, he now has the ultimate Thor's hammer. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is because it was a really beautiful issue that explained who it was. And he's trying to kill everybody in Muspelheim because they killed everybody in this other dimension, so he's now just going full-on berserker. And that's why I like the new War Thor, because he's like that old concept of you know, Viking berserkers. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's just, he's not gonna stop until he kills everybody he needs to. Just smash and smash and smash. Yeah, so this is a really cool book. This issue is very fight-oriented as well. It's just like a lot of, uh, a lot of really cool sound effects bu bubbles of like clang and crack a thum and stuff like crack that. crack That was always my favorite one, crack a thum all new Wolverine and Wolverine get together in Generations the Best. Uh, these are pretty cool storylines that are kind of kicking off the new legacy initiative at Marvel. And uh, little one shots, but we mm -hmm. get to see uh, the newer versions of these characters kind of basically show up on uh, earlier in the career of these legacy characters. So original Wolverine, Logan, not old man Logan, alive and well doing what he does best in japan mm -hmm. and laura shows up and he doesn't know who she is 
Mm. Uh, but there's lessons to be learned, as they say in the taglines. And, uh, and both of them, I think, get a, a pretty good understanding of themselves by the end of the issue. These are a lot of fun and really cool with getting to see yeah. these characters uh, interact in a different way. And I think we'll, we'll really kind of set the stage for when Marvel uh, sort of uh, returns these legacy characters. Yeah. Over here. And ninja fights are cool. And, I mean, Wolverine and Wolverine versus ninjas. Yeah. Come on. Man. I'm all about that. Uh, there's a, a, a villain shows up. Uh -huh. uh, carnage is had. This is cool. X-Men Blue number nine. This is kind of still in the Secret Empire storyline that's going on right now, even though Secret Empire has been coming out quite fast. Periodically. Yeah. Like, regularly. <laughs> yeah, like, actually on time, which is great. Thanks, Marvel. <laughs> Thanks, Marvel. Uh, so, Cullen Bunn is still writing some amazing X-Men stuff happening here. Uh, all the time-traveling X-Men have been essentially kidnapped and imprisoned in this country that has been made for mutants in the Secret Empire storyline called New Tian. And... Friends are fighting friends. Polaris shows up. Uh, it's so hard not to spoil things in this book. Uh, <laughs> and then things happen. Yeah, let's just say that a lot of fights are happening and friendships are destroyed forever. How's that? It's the best way I can put it. I love that that cover is like... Yeah, it's, it's reminiscent of the cover first appearance. swipe of the Storanko X-Men yeah. 50 cover. Yeah, I think that's great. Very cool. And Strength is awesome. And so is Art Adams. Yeah. Art I love Adams. Arthur, Arthur Adams. Uh, one of my favorite people to ever draw X-Men. I think he yeah. just draws those characters so well and always has. Ever since the cup, the cover of uh, Classic, Classic X-Men number, number one. one. Yeah, that was that's what got me into comics, that image. I was like, ooh, what are these guys all about? Yeah, that was a pretty excellent cover. Yeah. Wonder Woman 28. Diana Themyscira settles down for maybe a little bit of downtime, a little healing, a little recuperation, uh, helping out Commander Candy. Mm. And who should show up but an assassin? Why? And uh, and what is this going to lead to? What, uh, what kind of trouble is uh, Diana in now uh, when uh, there's a price on her head? Mm. Find out. Oh, man. This is Descender, this is issue number 23, Rise of the Robots. It's this new story arc that's been going on. Uh, I know I'm saying that a lot of things are like very fight oriented, but wow, this one kind of goes out there. For a, a quiet book most of the time, this book, this has a lot of action happening in it, this one. Also, one of the most disturbing last pages I've seen in a long time, where I was just like, oh, that doesn't make me feel good at all. Like, oh, yeah, see, that's not great. That's a, <laughs> that makes me feel weird. So, it's basically, there's literally nothing I can say that won't spoil things in this, other than this is a beautiful book, the artwork's great, Dustin Wynn is doing an amazing job, uh, Jeff Lemire has been weaving this intricate tapestry of this future history that is happening. It's, it's just amazing and fantastic. You should be reading this. <laughs> Nick says, why are robots always rising? Can't they just go to the beach? I would love to see a robot beach party. I'm just saying. I mean, I think they'd short out. I don't know. You never, they, they can play beach vo volleyball. Sand. With Kenny Loggins in the background. Sand. Robo Kenny Loggins. Bro. Robo Kenny yeah. Loggins. Hanging with the bots. It's all right. <laughs> Robo. Yeah. I started watching Westworld. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. That, ooh. The first episode. Holy I know. Cow. Are you? How far are you into? Uh, just it? the one. I'm also catching up. I've, I'm rewatching Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I did. It's like I need a. I need a. Because the episode of Game of Thrones I was about to watch is a tough one. Yeah. Um, but very challenging. But uh, I was like, well, yeah, I'm just let me check out Westworld. It's good. Yeah, Westworld. Uh, if you guys haven't watched it, every time I was watching it with my wife on my couch, either one of us was just like. Oh no, <laughs> it's, it's it just happens. getting more tense. Robot bleach blanket, blanket bingo. And Patrick loves image. Nick, I like your idea of robot beach blanket bingo. <laughs> Starring, uh, uh, man, it's trying to turn Annette Funicello's name into like a robot thing. Uh, Android Funicello? Uh, the Funicello is the comedy bit, though. Frankie Silicon Valley? <laughs> Whoa! Uh, Come on, that was pretty good. We'll workshop it. Okay. Haunted Horror number 29. 
This one's an easy one to talk about. I'm always going to mention them when they come out. Classic pre-code horror uh, presented in the in the fabulous Craig Yoey style of basically the way they originally looked. Mm -hmm. You got newsprint style paper, much nicer quality, but uh, the coloring is the same as those original comics. Uh, they're not recolored, they're not glossied up. They look like they would have looked in 1953. Nice. So, yeah, I love these books. They're awesome. Uh, every one of them is a joy of horror and discontent. My next one, I was talking about Charles Hill earlier, so I'm glad that I found this book again. Curse Words, this is issue number seven. This is just a really, really fun book. Ryan Brown is doing the art. He's the guy who made God Hates Astronauts. He's also writing Hero Killers right now for Dynamite. So basically it's about this wizard named Wizard, and magic tomfoolery happens a whole lot. You get to see this poor Frenchman get turned into a chair and he gets sit on a whole lot and his hand gets turned into a stapler. I know that doesn't make sense when I'm just saying it, but if you're reading this, it makes a lot of sense. It's like a running gag throughout the series. A little bit, yeah, this, this poor Frenchman. And uh, it's, this is kind of a calls to arms issue is the best way I could put it because Wizard's boss is not happy with Wizard and so he's trying to get all these wizards to fight him in, in our world, which would be pretty crazy and horrible. Nick says, I hope you watched all the original movies. Uh, a beach blanket bingo? Like, there was a bunch of those surf movies in the 60s with yeah. uh, Frankie and Annette. Um, yeah. I assume he was talking about those and not Westworld, which just has one movie. Well, there's also Future World. Oh, I never watched Future World. It is all right. Westworld was cool. Westworld was cool, but Future World was just like, okay. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Even existing. Never saw it. Guess I'll just have to check it out. Oh, my favorite character in all fiction is coming up. It's it's on the cover of that book. The Gecko? No, 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 no. No, he's on the cover. It's Lando Calrissian, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. That's not a system. That's a man. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars 34 focuses on Lando, uh, who got cornered by a beautiful bounty hunter. Uh, only she, she agrees to not turn him in in exchange for him helping out... Uh, him helping out on a uh, on a heist, on a scam, if you will, a scam, a flam, running some goods, which she he's known to do. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty awesome one shot story. You can read it and enjoy it. And uh, I mean, there's always a hook to like the next issue. But I love Jason Aaron's Star Wars. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun. It feels right for the world, uh, the universe that the, we all have come to know and obsess about. Yeah. Please. Okay. So, uh, yeah, give it a shot. Give it a read. Uh, even if you haven't been reading up to this point, you can pick up this one issue. It's awesome. Uh, uh, what do we have here? I recommend uh, one of those guys. <laughs> uh, so there's like betrayal and twists and turns. I love me some Star Wars. So as much of it as you can give to me, pile it on. Nice. Good Star Wars. I love I love Fairyland. This book is <laughs> hilarious, fun, dark, <laughs> ultra violent a whole lot, but uh, it's no longer I hate Fairyland, it's now I love Fairyland because Gertrude has become good. Uh, due to the events of the last issue where she was dealing with a David Bowie type character in a labyrinth, now she's all good and happy and loves everything and is awesome. And she's trying to find the key that will get her home. And she's trying finally to get home and <laughs> as this series always points out nothing ever really goes to plan and uh, the last last three pages was just awesome to me I, I laughed pretty darn hard <laughs> like like yeah Jeez. yeah this is great this is awesome so uh scotty young keep it up write this forever i will be reading this forever TMNT Dimension X number three. So, if you're a wrestling fan, you want to pick up this issue. Uh, see, Krang has like sent out uh, the assassin hacker to uh, take out all the witnesses in his trial. Mm -hmm. uh, they're scattered about uh, the Dimension X, hidden away and in hiding. So, one of them has started a wrestle planet called 
Grapple Ganza. Actually, I guess that's more of a show on the planet that he yeah. is, uh, uh, sort of like co-opted. And uh, you get to see the boys wrestling uh, along with Cryin Hound, the world champ of the Wrestling Federation. And uh, if you are familiar with the Monday Night Wars, you should probably give this a read. There's uh, some some similarities you'll you'll note, uh, maybe of a certain betrayal of a certain hero at the Bash at the Beach. God Shaper number five. Once again, I've been loving this series as well. Simon Spurrier is doing a really amazing job of world building with this, and Jonas Goonface, which is once again <laughs> one of the best names in comics. Uh, he is just getting to draw the craziest stuff that you would ever, you know, get to see in this. So if you're not, if you're unfamiliar with this alternate history kind of story where, you know, all the electricity stops working, but everybody, like, starts finding these little gods that gets to hang out with them. Only one out of every 10,000 people don't get a god, so they become god shapers and mess it all around. So that's a little backstory there. The main point of this issue is, uh, the main protagonist, I guess. Uh, he's not always the best protagonist. He's kind of like a jerk sometimes, but he uh, he gets his own little god for once. And it, it that's all I could really say without it getting pretty crazy and me not making sense. Uh, so you should definitely be reading this. The main focus of this whole story is there's this ghost looking god guy that always wears hats and his name's Bud, and he might be the key to everything. And hmm. so... This is just leading up to more of that. It was a wild-looking sci-fi series. Yes, very much so. It's awesome. Interesting. Yeah. Nick says he remembers playing Star Wars D6 with Brandon, with me. Yeah. Was that the West End game Star Wars? Uh, I don't remember any other Star Wars games. Besides Epic Duels, we did play Epic Duels. That was pretty awesome. It's like the greatest Star Wars board game of all time. Yeah. It's like crazy rare and sells for over a hundred bucks if you got a copy. It's complete. It's super cool because you can like do pairings of like, <clears throat> oh, I'm Han and Chewie versus, oh, let's say Darth Vader and a couple stormtroopers or uh, Yoda and who's Yoda with? I think he's with. It's, I think it's like prequel Yoda, so he's got a couple clone troopers. Oh, okay. Or there's a uh, Django, not Django. <laughs> um, Boba. Boba and uh, Zam... No, no, it's... Yes, yeah, Jang Django Fett and Zam Wessel. And then there's Boba and... IG-88. One, one of the other scrubs. One of the other scrubs. Dengar? No, not the scrub. The scrubbiest <laughs> scrub. He's kind of a scrub. Uh, Man, who's Boba doesn't want no scrubs. Boba. <laughs> a scrub ain't somebody who can get on slave one. Hanging up. Batwoman number six. Uh, this kicks off a really interesting storyline called Pax Batmana. Mm. Really interesting is a terrible word to say. Uh, thrilling, terrifying, unexpected storyline. Uh, seems, this is like a few years in the future, and there is a, uh, a terrible rule over Gotham City. Uh, the rule of Batman. Mm. And Kate Kane is out to stop it. However, things are not as they seem with Batman, understandably. Uh, shocks and surprises in this one. If you're a fan of this character, by all means pick it up. Or if you just like kind of cool alternate uh, future stuff, uh, this will give you plenty to wet your whistle. Nice. This book's called Secret Weapons Number 3. This is one of the more fun Valiant books. I, I, I really dig this one because it's about all these people with powers that aren't helpful at all. So one girl, she can talk to birds. Another guy can turn into stone, but he can't move. So essentially he just becomes a statue until he like decides not to be anymore. So he can't fight with stone fists, but you can just be like, and that's it. Uh, and then another guy, he just conjures up random things that aren't helpful at all. Like, you know, you'll try and like conjure up a knife or something and it's a gummy bear or something. It's it's pretty fun. Uh, this one issue, though, they start acting a little bit more like a team against the mysterious force that is against them. Getting it together. Yeah, so this book is really fun. I'm a huge fan of this series. You should definitely be checking this out. Palookaville, 23. <clears throat> Actually, Patrick asked, do you all have secret weapons 1 and 2 in stock? Yes, we do. 
I, I right see them there. right there. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Right there with all the other fine Valiant books. So yeah, you should pick them up. Stop in, get caught up. It would be awesome. Palookaville 23. For 20 years, Seth has been uh, telling the story of Clyde fans. In this volume, it comes to its conclusion. Uh, but we also get some more of the ongoing story that is him telling uh, his own life story and nothing lasts. So he's, he's got his own memoir and right now he's up to his teen years, hmm. which will surely have some awkward experiences based on his writings of the past. Uh, but beautiful style, you know, constant favorite of the indie comics crowd and, uh, you know, the next essential volume in his ongoing. Um, these used to be like comics. Yeah. And now he's just like, nah, hold whole hardcover yeah just moving on to that every couple of years and go yeah. from there uh, beautiful book though Seth is a, a, an amazing cartoonist and it shows nice this issue is called divinity number zero I'm sticking with Valiant for just a couple or for one more so this one when this series started out divinity back in 2015 it was like one of my top three books of the whole year because it was crazy and it was like 2001 a space odyssey kind of you know sci-fi where it's like deep sci-fi so this issue zero is kind of setting up it's a one shot and it's going to be setting up for the next series called eternity and it kind of it's it's good for people that are getting into valiant because it kind of shows you all the main players in the next coming you know year worth of story arcs that's going to be happening so this divinity guy he's essentially god he can do whatever and so he's just like oh hey ninjack how's it going hey bloodshot what's what's new with you but a little deeper than that <laughs> i've never had a god walk up to me and say hey dude what up i'd be like i'm all right question yeah are all the divinities connected yes so divinity one is about abram the guy named divinity and he was a cosmonaut that got sent out into farthest reaches of space decided to come back and he could do anything uh divinity two that's when another cosmonaut comes back and she's not as nice and then divinity three was called stalinverse where one of the unhappy cosmonauts decides to just remake the world where russia wins everything so yeah and this is going to be like eternity is the next part of it the, the lead into that um do you i assume you have to read the earlier one yes to know it very much helps that, out that makes sense yeah right. cool just some fan questions i was asked and wasn't quite sure of. oh yeah 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 lock and key heaven and earth uh, oh, this looks cool yeah well this collects like a couple like three of the uh for one shots and rare stories uh, into one volume so if you have uh, missed out on those single issues or you didn't get the IDW 10 year anniversary collection it's all right here plus it'll look beautiful with your other lock and key hardcovers uh, this is a, a favorite series of the store and for many of our fans uh, also huge uh, uh, fans of this uh, tales of the key house you ever read Lock and Key? I read it all in one day. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't stop. It's that good. It's a page yeah. turner. It's crazy. If you've never read it before, highly, highly recommend it. It's, a, it's sort of a psychological horror that you just don't even see coming. I was like, I tried that first one out. What's this about? And just couldn't wait for every new one. Yeah. Issue. So, there you go. Oh, you still good? Yeah. I'm just losing battery power. It's oh, good. okay. It'll last. I'll pull out my phone if we have to. Uh, so, Sheena. Queen of the Jungle. Dynamite's been doing a lot of really cool things, and one of those cool things is their zero issues are always a quarter. I think that's really awesome. Giving you that sample for cheap. Yeah, exactly. And that's and it's good that they're doing that because each zero issue, it just sets you up. I honestly had no idea anything about Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Read this issue, I'm all caught up. I know what to do now. She's and for two bits? Yeah. That's less than a shave and a haircut. For two bits, yo. So... When's the last time it was called two bits? I don't know. 1832? Yeah. Sometime a long time... Roger Rabbit. Yeah, that yeah. That was the last time anyone called that two bits. I love that movie. It's so good. I just rewatched it the other night. Oh, really? It's so good. I need to rewatch it again. So, uh, the whole premise of this is uh, Sheena's just running around the jungle, and she notices this flying turtle, which is actually a drone. So somebody's trying to film the jungle, and the last page was actually pretty great. I, I enjoyed this. So uh, 
I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to see what happens in this new Sheena series. It's written by Marguerite Bennett, who did uh, Animosity. She's writing Batwoman right now. And also Christina Trujillo. I'm unfamiliar with her work, but let's see what happens here. Is it Trujillo? Trujillo? Yeah. Like Robert Trujillo from the Metallica? Maybe. I don't know. You just pronounced it weird. Oh, sorry. I'm just picking on you. Oh, okay. Uh, Rusty says there should be a superhero version of Westworld. You can be any hero or villain you want to be. Ooh. I mean, but like you'd be you'd be like hanging out with those heroes and villains. Yeah. So do you get to be one as well, or are you like like side help? I don't, I would never want to be like a regular person in a superhero world. Right. Because you're just you're just a casualty. You yeah. Don't, you don't get to do anything. And you just watch buildings. Dude, I'm so excited for you to get to watch this show because, oh man, tell me whenever you watch an episode because uh, I can. Uh, I'll keep you up to date. Yeah, because ah, uh, so good. Nice. Nick says, "If my life is a psychological horror, is it still good?" Your life ain't no psychological horror. You live in Indiana, man. No. Uh, or have you have you not moved yet? Mm. Or is that even where you're moving? I don't even. He's in Pennsylvania. Then it was a psychological horror. I lived in Pennsylvania for four years, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. You lived in dirty Pennsylvania. I lived in Philly. He lived over by Penn State. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's, that's about an hour away. Robert says, has Revival ended yet? I think so. Has Revival ended? I don't know. I'm like 80% sure it ended. I'm often behind on everything, so. Yeah. I'm not sure, Rob. I'll let you know. I usually do the trade paperback thing for, like, my not absolute favorite comics. Yeah. Nothing wrong with Revival. It's a great comic. Just not in my upper echelon. Rusty says Stan Lee would be Anthony Hopkins' character. Oh, in Superhero Westworld? Yeah. That would fit. See him waxing all philosophical and... Yeah. Uh, face front true believer. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, Are it's you? your turn. Yes, I'm right. sorry. Batgirl, Stephanie Brown, Volume 1. This collects 1 through 12 of Stephanie Brown's Batgirl series. Uh, our fans often are looking for these back issues. Yeah. Like we never have them because Stephanie Brown fans are uh, very... Diehard? Very diehard, very thorough in their collecting of every issue that she's in. Uh, very... Uh, somewhat fanatical about their uh, uh, fandom of her, which is fine. That's where the word comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie Brown is a cool character, and she's uh, had her run as Batgirl, and uh, her fans absolutely love it. Now, you can get it in a book. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to enjoy uh, post-spoiler Stephanie Brown, there you go. Illinois. He's moving to Illinois. Oh. Come on, feel the Illinois. <laughs> wow. So, I am not ashamed to admit, I loved the 2099 books. Loved them, except for Ravage. Ravage 29, 2099 was kind of rough. But, Ooh. yeah. You remember that? Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, ooh. There's like a book having a message, and then there's like a message just being pounded into each issue. Yeah. It was what? also written by Stan Lee. Yeah. Ravage was rough. Ravage was pretty pretty rough but like you know spider-man 2099 was great i liked the x-men 2099 book doom warren ellis wrote that for a while doom was pretty great yeah spidey 2099 was was probably like the the pillar of the yeah. 2099 universe and ellis yeah ellis on doom was awesome yeah that's where we first thought like who is this guy who's this british dude yeah who's, who's this brit he was now writing all the x-men books yeah <laughs> at the time so of course, Deadpool has to have, you know, his his uh, hand in the game as well. So, Deadpool 2099. This is a collection of uh, alternating issues. You remember when Deadpool was just like, one issue would be Deadpool 2099 and three regular would happen. So, that's a collection of all of these. So, Wade Wilson is an old man. He's cantankerous. And uh, he has a youngin running around who is also Deadpool 2099. Uh, parts of this are really funny, too, because you get to see a lot of the other... Uh... Just parts, though. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, Gary Dugan doing this as well, so he's a solid writer. But, like, one part that, like, genuinely made me chuckle was you get to see Iron Fist 2099, and it's just a really old Danny Rand. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, hey. 
So I, I thought this was pretty cute. It was pretty fun. Uh, once again, I'm a huge fan of the 2099 stuff, so I'm probably buying this. So, yeah. Yeah. Border Worlds by Don Simpson. This was a cool 80s sci-fi uh, mystery noir. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a fan of Southern Cross, uh, this is definitely a book that you should give a, uh, uh, give a look. This is a, a sort of a, again, like during the kind of heyday of 80s uh, non-superhero comics where like everything that was fantasy or sci-fi or black and white or anthropomorphic creatures that know various martial arts um, these books were king you know if you were cool at all you were reading these books uh, Don Simpson never finished his border worlds until now there's now the final chapter that uh, those of us that were familiar with the storyline have finally uh, finally get to read in this particular volume this long 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 overdue volume uh, it's funny, I was in the back issues, I was grading some comics, and came across a couple issues, the first couple issues of Border Worlds, I'm like, man, this was so good. I would love to see this collected. Irony. <laughs> like, almost a week later, I saw the solicitation, and I was like, cool. Yeah, nice. I did it. I want to read that. I haven't read it yet, so I really want to give this a shot. Yeah, it's cool. You know, she's like, you know, things happen, it's like... Like a tiny bit starship troopers a little murder mystery it's, it's very cool so i don't know if people have been following the news today today's been a little wacky and how prescient is this book uh <laughs> stuff my president says i'm not gonna that's not what it really says yeah we're we're, we're a family show it's like censored on the cover though right yeah i was just playing a show. <laughs> <laughs> uh so this is by shannon wheeler i love shannon wheeler stuff and basically he is just illustrating trump's tweets and it's, it adds some levity that we kind of need right now for insanity. So, uh, yeah, you guys should definitely be reading this. Cause he even, like, drew out, like, the, the Twitter icon. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah, so, uh, like, it's just <laughs> it's just stuff like this. It's, it's great. I'm going to be definitely taking this home with me tonight so I can uh, read the entire thing. You know, I love too much Coffee Man by Wheeler. I love God is Disappointed in You yeah. by, by Wheeler. Everything he does is is, well, uh, is pretty darn hilarious and like also gives you like that insight on life that makes you want to scream. Yep. So this is a uh, this is gonna be a pretty good one. That's awesome. I didn't know that was coming out this week. Yeah. Fantasy Sports Number Three: The Green King. Uh, this is highly recommended by. Uh, current Austin Books employee uh, Kachi Kalachi and former employee Nolan who still excitedly comes in yeah. every week to buy a stack of comics but most excitedly when a new issue of Fantasy Sports is out and I say issue but it's a nice big tall hardcover yeah. little mini volume uh, very cool sci-fi sports um, splash of fantasy obviously mm. uh, very cool style didn't you say like a spiritual mini golf or something this issue has Wiz uh, locked into a game of supernatural mini golf which is awesome there's the other talking about I must putt <laughs> it's pretty great excellent uh, so yeah this is uh, finally out it's a long time in between issues but well worth the wait my last one, as usual, is the Sidekick Special of the Week. I'm really stoked about this one. This is, this was so cool series. It's Brew Baker and Mike Diodato doing Secret Avengers. So, if you're not familiar with this at all, you should really pick it up. It's only going to be five dollars, uh, and we have, we have enough for you know some people to come by. But like last week, that book flew off the shelves on Wednesday, so you might want to show up early to grab this because we can only have so much. Basically. This is when Bucky was Captain America, and Steve Rogers decides to get a Black Ops team of Avengers. And he has, you know, like, the wild card, the space guy, the, the spy, the intellectual, the tank, and, you know, the, the, the goddess. Former women's lib. Yeah. Activist. Yeah. So uh, everybody has their own defined roles, and this gets weird. There's some weird stuff happening in this book. And this led to a lot of really cool series like Horn Ulysses doing it as well. So, this is great. It's an odd team, but I definitely enjoyed oh, yeah. that run. Yeah, it was amazingly good. And I like Mike, Mike Diodato's artwork a whole lot. I think he's 
tops. That was the immediate precursor to Warren Ellis being on Teenage yeah. Avengers, right? Yeah. yeah. So, which is m my favorite Avengers run since anything since the sixties. Yeah. So this is great. It's only five bucks. You should get here early though at the Sidekick store because these are gonna go quick. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what do you want to talk about? What? No, what? What do you? Uh, what do you got to tell? You people? just can't even ask that question without a certain uh, song popping in my head. A little TLC. Song. A little more TLC. <laughs> We're huge TLC fans at Austin Books. We really are. Yeah. It's I, pretty. Strange. And I'm totally okay with that. I mean, it's just perfect R and B. Yeah. It is. Um, so let's talk about uh, our preparations for the 40th anniversary sale. 40 years. 40 years the store has been providing comic book entertainment to Central Texas. Yeah. And beyond. Oh yeah. We're having a lot of sales. Each one of our store is, stores are doing a lot of sales for Labor Day weekend. It's going to go from Friday to, uh, Friday to Monday. I'm sorry. Secret tip. Yeah. Thursday night. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, or ask us about it when you're in the store. We'll give you the details of the Thursday night preview night. Yeah. Since you've watched us and uh, our, enjoy our little uh, little thing that we have, or what have you, uh, <laughs> we'll tell you all about the Thursday night preview night. Yeah. So we'll uh, heavily push that, but it's definitely a thing. There's a ton of sales going on. I can't list them all right now. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. You can find them on the on our website, AustinBooks.com. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everything is on uh, AustinBooks.com. I checked to make sure that that is up. It yeah. is. It's on our Facebook. It's on our newsletter that we send out every Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be... Uh, whew, whew. Discounts plenty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to lose some paychecks on this one. And we're getting the store ready, too. Yeah. I believe we just got some more statue shelves. Yes, we did. For our statue room. Yeah. Got some more statue cases. We're going to be filling those up with all the stuff that we haven't been able to put out just because we didn't have room. But now we got room, and it's going to be awesome. We've had kind of a stockpile of statues yeah. that we've kind of like cycled in and out, but we're finally going to be able to get them all out. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. And they'll be a little bit less full than they are right now. Yeah. We'll be able to see them all in, in their glory. In their wonderful glory. In their splendor, if you will. Oh, that's a good word. Mm. I like splendor. Splendor's good. Nice. Uh, what else have we got going on? I and mean, that's that's basically focusing on our main... Ooh, some questions. <laughs> All right. Patrick says, thoughts on Regression 4 releasing tomorrow? I've been reading Regression, and I've been really digging it. It's uh, Issue 4 is coming out tomorrow. Um... I think Cullen Bunn does really great horror stories. If you haven't read The Unsound, that's another series he's doing right now, you should definitely be reading that. Nick says, can we participate online? Unfortunately, no. Yeah. However, I am starting to, just the very beginning of, uh, listing showcase comics on the Austin Books eBay. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm gonna kinda reach out to the world and see who's interested in a copy of Avengers number 41 or whatever cool, valuable comics I come across. Yeah. Uh, so that's gonna be, it's gonna add some time to my grading. <laughs> and Robert asks, any word on Lady Killer number five? Rob, I don't know what's going on with that series. It's, uh, that issue's been delayed for a while. I honestly don't know when issue five's coming out. When it does, we'll have it in stock. Yeah, I'll be sure to talk about it on on the show, so you'll you'll be able to see that it's coming out that day. The return of the lady. Or just ask me tomorrow. I'll see if I can look it up and see if there's any new info. Oh, yeah. Yes, we need to constantly be asked questions so that we don't forget our, uh, the information we've gathered. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else is going on? The sales, the big thing. The sales, pretty much everything on my mind. There's a lot of really cool surprises coming for that too. I've priced like multiple alphabets worth of comics, uh, back issues to go back there. So if you partake in the back issue part of the sale, there's going to be some some fresh hotness back there. <laughs> some some all new, all different back issue comics. We are like <laughs> catchphrase machines today. We're good. Fresh new hotness. I mean, I maybe stole that from Will Smith. Oh, okay. Uh, what did he say? Something was. The hotness, right? In Men in Black 2? I don't know. I don't remember. The new hotness, I think he said. The, the new hotness? I just made it fresh. Ooh. I made it my own. Yeah, there you go. Totally nice. my own. It makes me go nanners. I'm on the TLC. Yeah. So, uh, anything else going on with you? Uh, we're going to stream some Dungeons and Dragons over at Outlaw Moon Games at 7 30 ish. Nice. Yeah, we got some more Frost Giant fun. Cool. Actually, it's not Frost Giants. The team has found themselves in a hotel. A tavern uh, in 
filled with people that want to uh, maybe kill them. Hmm. So, ooh. I kind of I kind of wish it was like the old times where a tavern was also a hotel, you know. Oh, man, yeah, go to a tavern and then you just drink too much and then Yeah, just well, I'll guess, crash here. I guess I want a bed for the night. Yeah. Mm, that'd that, be awesome. That'll be two silver, sir. <laughs> How about 20 bucks? Yeah. Uh yeah, that would be rad. Yeah. So what else do we got going on? Uh I I've really just been focusing on the sale stuff. I'm finishing my arm tattoo on Saturday. Sweet. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Uh, Until your face is colossus, I don't. Well, I, I'm not finishing this one. I'm finishing this one, but I am going to talk to uh, the guy who did this one and see if we can expand out a little bit. A little Lockheed here. Oh, that'd be cool. A little Lockheed sitting on your wrist or whatever. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta talk to Mark about that. Well, there you go. Yeah, ideas and plans. Well, cool. Well, uh, I guess I'll do it for us. Uh, you can follow me at Super Tidenton One. You can follow you at Comic Book Brando. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we'll be seeing you soon. Get ready for the sale. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be so cool.